Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Chief Sweet and today I'm gonna show you my Euromastix feeding guide. Now if you're new to Euromastix or you've kept them for a long time, you may have heard that they're actually herbivores strictly and they don't eat any insects. Well that is actually false. In the wild, Euromastix are observed and have been proven to eat insects. Tons of people have went out there, researched them, they've looked at their poop, they've looked at the insides of their stomachs, and Euromastix do in fact eat insects. So Euromastix are actually omnivores, they eat both, but their primary diet does consist of greens and vegetables. And we'll get into that deeper into the video. But if you wanna know exactly what to feed your Euromastix every single day, let's jump right into it, shall we? So daily foods I like to offer my Euromastix are collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens. I like to do spring mix as well, but it's very important in a lot of spring mixes, there's a lot of spinach. You wanna take the spinach out and you could give the spinach to them like once a month, but you don't want too much spinach. And the reason for that is spinach actually binds with calcium and your Euromastix needs calcium for good bone growth. So you wanna limit that as a treat. So you get a spring mix, take the spinach out. It will look like this. Just take it out and it's totally fine. You can put it in another container and feed it to them once a month. But besides spinach, there's also arugula, green leaf lettuce, and the infamous, you can also feed them kale. I will I almost jumped the gun there. But the infamous, and you, all, you might hear people say, don't feed them this, it's not nutritional, but romaine lettuce. I feed my Euromastix romaine lettuce at least once a week. Um, no more than two times a week, but I like to give them romaine lettuce for hydration. So Euromastix don't readily drink water because they're from the desert. They're not really used to water being available. So they get all of their hydration through greens or insects because insects have uh, hydration as well. Um, but I feed romaine lettuce. It's very important. If you just got a Euromastix from a, like an expo or a pet shop, you prob I highly advise you to feed romaine lettuce for the first week. And the reason for that is usually when people get um, Euromastix from a pet shop or an expo, they are really dehydrated. Why is that? Because most Euromastix are wild caught. They're not really breeding them. They're just getting imported in and that process is very long and hard and they're usually starved and super, super dehydrated. When they're super dehydrated, it can lead to kidney failure and other all sorts of ailments like high parasite loads. So I like to feed them for that first week, just nothing but romaine lettuce. And I do add some collard greens on the side. So just extra good greens, but the romaine lettuce they go crazy for because they know it's full of water and it's very good for them and it rehydrates them. So that entire first week when you first get your Euro and you don't know if it's from a breeder, if it is from a breeder, you don't, don't worry about that. You don't have to do this, but if it's not, and you don't know for sure someone bred this, then do romaine lettuce the entire first week. Next up, now this is where it gets a little tricky because the next things on the list is stuff that you might not be able to find near you, but a lot of your Euromastix breeders love to feed escarole, uh, dandelion greens, endive, and I have never found those in my entire state. I've looked everywhere and I've never seen them. I would love to feed that to my uh, Euromastix because they seem to love it. Can't find it. So if you can't find it either, that's totally okay. I couldn't either. But if you can find it, offer those as well daily. Now this is just what I feed daily. There's so much more your Euromastics can eat, but it's very important before we move on to some good treats. Now treats are not daily. You can feed them every now and then. But before we get off, I need to tell you, do not feed your Euromastics fruits. No fruits at all. And the reason for that is, um, it's high in sugar. And I know what you're thinking. Probably like watermelon would be good to rehydrate, you know, your Euromastics. But even watermelon, they're just, these lizards are just not used to the amount of sugar that's in fruits. And if you do get it in, you're trying to rehydrate your Euromastics, that amount of sugar with the water, it may be just too much for them. So definitely stay away from fruits. You don't want any fruits because they're just too high in sugar content. Now some great treats that a lot of people use and um, it does well for them, but sometimes your masks are different, but like butternut squash, acorn squash, and I will say both of those I've tried for all of my Euromastics, and none of them like it. I don't know what's up with that, but tons of other people have had success with that. So if you want to offer that, go right ahead. Another great thing is grated carrots, like get carrots and just grate it up into like little tiny thin flakes and then give it to your Euromastics. Another one is Timothy hay. Now Timothy hay, I know you could get it in like the, like guinea pig section, but I like to sprinkle it. I learned this from Arid's only great resource if you wanna check him out. Um, I like to sprinkle it around my enclosure because it makes it almost look like a desert and they will eat the Timothy hay and munch on it as well. Another one that you can find in local grocery stores as well is spineless cactus. Now my Euromastics, a few of them did like it. A few of them liked it and others didn't really care for it at all. So like I said, it really depends honestly on the Euromastics themselves. 
But now let's get into the next thing, which you will see quite often is seeds. This is very, um, like now it's getting really popular. But one thing I will tell you is do not, I repeat, do not use seeds as substrate. It's not good to eat where you poop and your mastics will poop. And if they've been eating a lot of greens, they're gonna pee because they have so much, they take in all that water from the greens and they release it with actual pee. It'll be just like water coming out. And if that gets onto the seeds, that's not good. You don't want them. A lot of times, like I said, your mastics have parasites and that's how they reinfect themselves. Do not use seeds as substrate. But on the topic of seeds, now a lot of people have success with seeds. I have had success with seeds, but I will say, I don't like seeds as much because my uromastics don't digest them very well. They do eat them, but in the poop, I just see seeds. It'll just be littered with seeds. Um, I don't really, you can, but I limit my seeds to about like once a year around springtime going into summer and that's all. It's maybe like a month, I'll give it to them a small amount daily in a bowl and just let them eat what they want to. But seeds also, if you got, like I said, if you got your uromastics from a store or pet shop, don't offer seeds at all because it's really dry and you're trying to rehydrate your lizard. You're trying to get them rehydrated and if they eat that, it's gonna make them even more dehydrated. So you need to stay away from seeds for that period of time. But on the seeds, uh, I do get lentils and you can buy these at Walmart, like around the rice and beans. And lentils are amazing. And you also can do this with millet seeds as well. I get millet seeds, um, like the finch bird seeds. And if you just put water on it, they will start sprouting. With lentils, I'll just put a lot of water on there and I'll even just get wet dirt and just put it in a pot, throw the seeds on there, just get it real nice and wet. And then the next day they're gonna be sprouted. They're incredibly easy to sprout. And I put those in my Euros tank and they love them. They love sprouted lentils. You can feed the lentils by themselves as well, but sprouted lentils are my Euros favorite. They absolutely love them. I've I've made like big buckets of them, just threw like an entire bag in there with some soil. And like in th three days, I just have a forest growing out of that bucket. <laughs> So with all of this I just said, you can feed this daily, but it's very important to know like what, you could feed this for a baby daily, right? But at a certain point, a year mask is gonna grow old and you can start skipping days. You can like feed them one day, skip a day, feed them one day, skip a day, because they might start getting too fat. And that's what you gotta look at. Now, it's very hard for new people to understand how the fat looks on a year mastix because their belly is not the fat. They store all their fat in their tails, in their hips, around their legs. And you can see this, on, this is a picture of one Euromastix I got from an expo. He looks horrible in terrible condition and I brung him back to health. This is after three months, this is what he looked like. He was super dehydrated, he was starved to death, had little to no fat on his tail. And you can see that by, if you start to see this tail start sinking in and it looks like a point like that, you see the, the bone, the spine on the tail, that's not good. Feed those every day. You need to get those fat again. You need to build up those fat stores. Uh, your mastic's tail needs to look like a pencil. Doesn't look right, but it needs to it needs to look like a tube, you know? It needs to have fat on the tail. Not Obviously not a tube, but close to a tube as you can get. Your, if your, your mastic's tail is like sinking in and you can start to see the spine, the hip bones, he looks very skinny on the legs, that's something to worry about. You need to build up the fat. So in that case, if you do have a healthier mass and he's older, you can skip a day. But pretty much 12 inches or under, except like Egyptian, that's why it's really hard to talk about because your mastics, there's so many species of them, Egyptians, the Saharans, the Ornates, you know, Flava fasciatas, but, and they all kind of have a different way about them, but they're all kind of similar but some are larger than others. So I just say like, you know, just look at the fat and if you're new, it's kind of hard because a lot of people can't really judge the fat. But like I said, this is a unhealthy Euromastix. This is what his tail looks like. And this is a healthy Euromastix. You can see how much better he looks. The fat on his tail, it's not sinking in at all and he looks great. So next up is the infamous and scary insects. Now, a lot of people are like, oh yes, like I said, even in Euromastix groups, people are like, they don't eat insects. Now you can grow a Euromastix without insects. They can eat plants their whole lives and be perfectly fine. But if you wanna offer insects, I will say this, in the wild, they primarily eat greens with insects. And as babies, they do eat insects. The babies in the wild, they do prefer insects a little bit more, but it's not like an everyday thing, okay? Don't feed your Euromastix insects every single day. For babies, I would do it like once to three times a week, three times being max. And you can, not a ton of insects either. You can do like a mealworm, one super worm and that's it. Or like one to three mealworms and that's it. Um, it's not, you don't have to offer a lot, just a little bit. And it's a great protein source for your Euromastix. 
And then for adults, you can chop that down even more and feed it like once every two weeks. And you can feed them like, if for adults, they're gonna be larger, so you can feed them like two mealworms once every two weeks. You can just do it once a month, or like, it just depends a couple times a month. It's really up to you. And if you don't wanna feed them insects, you can get away with that. But we're, I need to talk about vitamins and supplements, because with my Euromastix, when I try to put vitamins, what you do need <coughs> are some vitamins. I like Repti Calcium. Now, um, you can use with D3 or without D3. It's really up to you because um, if you provide good UVB, which is an Arcadia like 14%, that's the only one I like to use. If you're not using that, you can go ahead and use the vitamin with D3. Most reptiles make their own D3 with good UVB, so that I usually use this because I provide insanely high quality UVB to my beard. To not, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Your mastix almost said bigger dragons, but I use it without because I provide very good UVB. So either one of these will work, and you can dust these like once to a couple times a week. Um, a couple times, like so, one to three times a week, you can dust your, um, and this is where it gets interesting. That's why I said it's very interesting. Uh, my year mastix will not eat any greens with this on there. When I dust it, they will stay away from it. They don't want it at all. So a lot of times I'll get like a bowl or a plate and I'll put it at the bottom and I'll set the green on top of it and kind of like rub it in a little bit and like trick them to eat it. So when they eat the green, they're getting it in, right? Um, I also like to use a multivitamin. Once every two weeks, um, I, I use this without D3. Um, but like I said, it's really difficult to get your Euromastix to eat greens when you've sprinkled it on. I mean, I think that might do with like a plant from their region and they just know that it's poisonous and because a lot of poisonous plants look powdery and they see it and they don't want to eat it. However, if you offer mealworms dusted with this stuff, they're going to eat that stuff no matter what. They will go after it and that's how I dust my Euromastix. I actually feed them soaked. I just get the mealworm. I just put it all over it and I give them the mealworm soaked in some calcium and some of this once every two weeks. This um, calcium, you could do one to three times a week for your Euromastix. Um, but yeah, that's how I trick my Euromastix. I don't even trick them. They just see the mealworm and they're like, I'm eating that mealworm. So that's how I dust them and get away with it. Now, like I said, if you don't, you don't have to do this at all. You can do the other trick I mentioned, but I will say most Euromastix are really good. I don't know what it is, but they just see the powder on the plants and they're like, not today, not today. So for the insects, you can stick to just like superworms, mealworms. They do eat crickets as well. And this one's gonna be a little hard. And the beetles. If you ever kept mealworms or superworms, the beetles that they turn into, they eat those as well in the wild. But this one, they do eat a lot and it's grasshoppers. Now, obviously don't go outside and get grasshoppers because they might have parasites. They might have pesticides on them and you don't wanna hurt your mastix. So if there's some way you could get grasshoppers that are totally fine, nothing wrong with them, you can feed them grasshoppers. So in the wild, they do eat those things. So you can't offer that as the insects as a food source if you want to. But that's pretty much my feeding guide. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can ask them down below or join my Discord. I'll see you next time.